Can you convey your interest and urgency about the Fed to voters? I I've never seen a Senate campaign use that uh, productively as an issue with voters. So think of it this way. The Fed has a lot to do with basic security of our economy. Whether or not when you put money in banks, you'll be able to get that money back out when you need it. And that's true for families. It's true for small businesses. It's true for nonprofits. It's true for all of us. Now, the problem we've got is that the bankers, especially the big bankers, the ones of the multi-billion dollar banks, come to Washington and say, weaken the regulations, weaken the regulations. Following the crash in 2008, we tightened those regulations with Dodd-Frank. But then they came back and they said, weaken them some more. Donald Trump actually ran for president telling the multi-billion dollar banks that if people would elect him, he would weaken those regulations. He got elected. He then put regulators in place who had his same philosophy, go light on these multi-billion dollar banks. Then he went to Congress and he said to Congress, roll back some of the restrictions in Dodd-Frank. That's what happened. And then the Fed chair actually used that opportunity to just open the door wide open for these big banks that wanted to do three things, load up on risk, boost their short-term profits, and pay themselves enormous bonuses and big salaries, and then blow up the banks, forcing the government to come back in and backstop them. It's very, very important that we in Congress put a stop to that. We've got to tighten back down on these banking regulations. And you're right, Lawrence, this is a part of why I'm running for president, because I truly do believe that we need a government that isn't just there to work for the rich and the powerful, for those who are well connected, for those who can hire an army of lobbyists to come to Washington and get rules in their favor, that we need a government on the side of the people. And I just want to say, anybody who thinks that's a good idea, I hope they'll pitch in 10 bucks to ElizabethWarren.com and help me run this race that's a people-fueled race instead of one that's all about lobbyists and big money. I see on Twitter that uh, many of you heard what I heard when Senator Elizabeth Warren misspoke in our interview earlier in the show. It was just one one little word she slipped on, but it turns out in politics it's actually a pretty big word and has created a bit of confusion on Twitter. There is a custom in the United States Senate that allows senators to revise and extend their remarks. And rejoining us now to do exactly that is Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Now, Senator, the last office you were a candidate for appearing on this show was the office of president of the United States. Uh, you announced your re-election campaign for the Senate uh, today. And in the middle of the interview, you used the word president when you said, uh, that's why I'm a candidate for president. And I heard you say president, and here's a little secret for the audience at home. I heard that word and I thought, ah, it, it's hard to kind of get back in there with a wrench and, and go back <laughs> into that. The audience will figure it out. It turns out on Twitter, not all of them have. And so there, so there are some people out there who are wondering if there might suddenly be a challenge uh, to Joe Biden. Uh, you have the floor, Senator. Uh, no, no, no. No <laughs> challenge to Joe Biden. And thank you for letting me come back and revise. I really appreciate it, Lawrence. You know, but I also want to say it does give me a chance to say how really excited I am to support Joe Biden for president, Kamala Harris for vice president. They have done an extraordinary job over the last two and a half years, and the direction they've led our country has been amazing. Look at what they've managed to get done. The largest climate package in the history of the world, uh, paid for by a 15 percent minimum corporate tax. They've cut the price of insulin for seniors down to $35. They've gotten prescription drug negotiation in place for Medicare. They've gotten us an infrastructure plan that's going to help us with roads and with bridges. They have done an amazing amount. And President Biden 
has been all the way in to try to cancel student loan debt for those who are getting crushed because their big sin was to try to get an education when they didn't come from a family that could afford to pay for it. I am in this fight all the way with them. I am honored to be running on the same ticket. I'm going to do everything I can to help them get reelected while I'm running to, I hope, get myself reelected. Because I really do believe that we have a chance that when we stand together, when we fight together, when we persist together, that we can make real change and we can make this country work, not just for the richest and most powerful. We can make it work for everyone else. And I'm glad to have a chance to do that. You know, Senator, uh, when I was working in the Senate, the announcement that a senator was not running for re-election often made more sense to me than running for re-election because I saw the job up close and I know mm -hmm. how glamorous it isn't. Uh, <laughs> and all those three o'clock in the morning uh, work sessions. Uh, it, how how much do you really put it, let me put it another way? Why do you want to stay at this job? Because I can see real change. I can feel it. I've had it happen. You know, it, I got through a bill on hearing aids that has changed the cost of hearing aids from thousands of dollars down to hundreds of dollars. And that's going to make a difference in the lives of literally millions of people who have hearing loss and who cannot afford what hearing aids used to cost. That's a big difference. Getting in these fights all the way matters. The fight that I'm ready to wage now, and I've been in and we haven't yet delivered as much as we should, is the fight for child care. Here, I, I, again, I want to give credit to President Biden, to Vice President Harris, the budget they've put together, is to say it's time for us as a nation to make the investment in child care, to recognize that if we want mamas and daddies to be able to go to work, then they not only need roads and bridges to get there and electricity and water when they arrive, they need access to affordable, safe, high quality child care. That's a fight worth having. And and right now, I know it's tough out there. I get how extremists the Republicans are. But the truth is, Lawrence, you can also feel it. You can see the hope. You can see the young people who are engaged now. You can see people who say, I've seen a difference that Joe Biden, that Kamala Harris, that I hope Elizabeth Warren have made in my life. And I'm going to be in this fight because I believe we can make more change.